to HOB TV. We're excited for today's episode. Like mentioned last week, we have a special guest today. For we, First, we want to start off as well for thanking those that have subscribed, those that are commenting, those that are viewing. Thank you guys. And if you're watching for the first time, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and stay in tune with us. Like I said, today we have a very special guest here. And I'm going to pass it over to my boy Steve and give him that proper intro. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to HOB TV, episode 14. Uh, now, the man sitting to my left first came to prominence on season one of NBC's reality boxing series, The Contender. It was there where he displayed his signature grit, desire, and the willingness to fight anyone in any weight class, as he demonstrated by scaling up two weight classes from welter to middleweight, all for a shot of competing on the show. A quintessential underdog, Alfonso Gomez would go on to score upsets over legends Arturo Gatti and Jose Luis Castillo, while never shying away from the most difficult of challenges in a prime Miguel Cotto and Canelo Alvarez. All, all in all, his resume reads as a who's who of current former world champions, 17 to be exact. Although we last saw him in the ring four years ago while defeating the tough Yoshimiro combo guy, um, he, he's finished there. This September, he returns to resume his 18-year career to sport. Here to talk about where he's going next in his career, as long as where he's been, one of the true warriors of the sport, Alfonso S. Gomez. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Alfonso, uh, you know, welcome HOB TV. Yep. Um, so it's official. You're coming back in September against to be announced. Uh, what prompted this decision and who are some of the names you're eyeing? There's been some back and forth with Omar Chavez, we understand, yeah. on social media. Right. Let us know who you're eyeing. Well, you know, first of all, thank you so much for this. You know, Households, House of Boxing is already a household name in the boxing world. And I am so happy you guys, you know, were able to push it into, you know, the whole online world and have House of Boxing TV, you know, what's meant to be. So thank you for that. Thank you for the interview. I'm glad to be here. Now, to answer your question, um, yeah, I just decided to wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm going to come back to boxing. And I did. <laughs> and it's that easy. <laughs> and, you know, basically, you know, look, I came back to boxing mainly to open up, wake up a lot of boxers to a lot of things in their lives, in boxing, in their sports, that ultimately is going to make them happier, you know, happier to be what they're doing. Uh, I grew up as a boxer, uh, not being too happy with what I had to do because the mentality that they feed us, they feed us might not be the best one to do it in terms of uh, you know, making the fighter grow more and feel happier and you know, explore uh, that feeling that obviously generates more, more positive outcomes in your life. You know? yeah. Things like that. Yeah, man, so uh, definitely is Omar Chavez someone that you're interested in coming back and fighting? Because I've seen, uh, I'm not sure if it's his Instagram or Twitter, right. I'm, he, he's mentioned you. He's mentioned you're yeah. one of those guys that well, he possibly wants to fight. Well, that's the thing with this coming back. You know, a lot of boxers, they think they need somebody to help them get fights, right? Exactly. But I think we are in an era where we have the ability that we didn't have that before. Not even in my era when I was fighting, yeah. coming down the contender. We still needed certain people to help us get those fights. When it comes to Omar Chavez, for example, that you're asking about yeah. him, I decided to wake up one day and say, I'm gonna come back to boxing, but I wanna do it differently. I wanna do it with the help of the people, with the help of the guys that love boxing, the ones that you know, ultimately are the ones feeding boxing to be alive, you know, in exactly. one sense. And I started asking questions online. I started to go online and started going in there and say, who do you guys want me to fight? And out of those names, between, you know, it came, uh, I guess, the good names, the reasonable names, uh, the logical names were Brandon Rios, yeah. um, Victor Ortiz, mm -hmm. um, Omar Chavez, who you mentioned, yeah. uh, El Inocente Alvarez, and so forth. Yeah. So within this uh, poll that I did, you know, this, these guys came up, Omar Chavez found out that I was putting him in a poll. Mm. So he kind of came on Twitter and said, hey, we don't, you don't have to do no polls. Let's just yeah. do this once and for all. Okay. And I was like... Yes, it's working. Yeah, you know, in reality, it's, it's working. It was yeah. part of the the plan. So yeah, definitely, Omar Chavez is out there wanting to do, and I'm so happy because I'll give you news. Today I spoke to um to Guillermo and Pepe, who okay. are the uh, the main guys that handle the yeah. of motors, and mm -hmm. uh, 
everything's moving forward and it's potentially going to be Omar Chavez uh, from nice. Omar Chavez fight. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking Johnny news. Chavez. Omar Chavez. We hope so, man. I mean, you're definitely an exciting fighter. I mean, you definitely don't shy away from any challenge. And you, I mean, I mean, you produce great fights, man. And I'm, I'm hoping this fight happens, right? Happens. Well, definitely. You know, it'll be another name to add to the resume of, of big names Impressive and notice of me. And you know, It'll be awesome, you know, just to be yeah. with Chavez, his dad, dude. I love his dad. I grew up watching <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, you know? everyone does, right? Yeah. You know, el gran campeón yeah, mexicano yes. y mundial. Yeah, right? I don't know. Just, dude, come on. Uh, so, yeah. being I, in that with him, it'll be sick. I, yeah. I, th I, think, I think you're destined to fight the whole Chavez family, brother, because yeah. you're scheduled to fight Chavez Jr. or Omar true. Chavez. That's yeah. You want to call out the dad? Like, yeah. Chavez? Or <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no, with all respect to the dad, not at all. You know, yeah. I'm just going to be so happy. If that fight does happen, I'm very going to be so happy that it actually goes from being asleep one day and waking up imagining uh, something doing it pursuing it and if it happens it's going to be awesome it's going to be a testimony that anything you put into your mind you can yeah. make it happen yeah alfonso uh, of course you were being trained by your father alfonso gomez senior he was in the corner for your last fight against comic guy uh, how's he doing how's your pops doing and, and is he going to be back in your corner for for this latest run for your combat very good. Well, he's doing fantastic, you know. Retired. I retired four years ago. He retired four years ago as well. Okay. So he's been enjoying life, basically. And well, to answer your question, coming back, yeah, definitely he's going to be in my corner. I mean, so you cannot forget that the person who was there from the beginning, the one that sacrificed him. Well, he sacrificed uh, more than me, I'll be honest. Yeah. You know, I think when you are a father and you have your child coming up and you're his trainer, yeah. It you sacrifice more than the, the guy, the kid does, or the, the athlete yeah. does. So I definitely is going to be in my corner. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, you mentioned Omar Chavez, Ramon Alvarez. How how about two guys that fight tomorrow night, Friday night? There's a junior middleweight fight: Humberto Soto, Jesse Vargas. Mm -hmm. uh, any interest in facing the winner, or maybe one of those guys? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, you know. Um, Coming back to boxing, I didn't want to do it like typically, typically it's done, you know? Yeah. People do it still like 19, it's 1919, when it's actually 2019. Yeah. So back in the day, you kind of needed a sort of like a, like a hierarchy ladder. You know, you, you knew a trainer that needed a manager, that need, knew a promoter. Yeah. That could set you up to a fight that would eventually mm -hmm. connect you to the media, which was the only source of connection to the fans, right? Yeah. In 2019, the connection is direct. Hello, fan, you're right there. Right What's there. up, buddy? Social See? media, right So there, somehow, man. somehow the middleman, you know, shouldn't be as powerful as you know he, he is when yeah. the reality is differently. So when it comes to your question, do I want to fight them? Mm, not really, because in, in terms of somebody wanting to um, set up his own fights, or not yeah. set up his own fights, we do need promoters, don't get me wrong. Yeah. They need to promote fights. We do need managers that know about yeah. law and protect you. But we do, do need to understand that fighters also have a big voice and big power in this. So when you ask me your question to answer it directly, no, it's not interesting to me because it's more interesting to me to be a voice for boxers. Yeah. And fighters like Chavez or Inocente Alvarez or Victor Ortiz give me more exposure. Yeah. You know, maybe not more money. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested about that. It's just more exposure to obviously expand the knowledge that I'm trying to portray. And more ears, more boxers could actually be happier in that sense. Uh, Afonso, let's go back to the Gotti fight. Yeah. Where is he? That man yes. right there. Right, the right here. <laughs> yeah, Gotti. Hey, let me raise his hand up. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, Afonso, uh, Gotti, for that fight, he handpicked you, okay? He handpicked you for that fight. It was pretty much said that he was going to fight Chavez Jr. next after that. Gotti was HBO's golden boy. The fight was in his home turf, Atlantic City. Mickey Ward was in his corner as a trainer to add to his storyline. Uh, all this against you, yet you were psyched, you were ready, and you retired him in a seven round TKO. What can you tell us about that fight? Did Gotti tell you anything afterwards? And was this the best version of Alfonso Gomez that we've seen? Oh man, very good question. Wow, very <laughs> impressive. Well, imagine this. I, I was a bit, not only a fan, he was my idol because I've always admired that fighter that just get, put his heart there. Yeah. And as a Mexican fighter, I think he had fight of the year type many times, you know, compared to other Mexican fighters who never get it. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Mexican fighters are supposed to be the, you know, 
the Warriors, but this guy who's just an Italian was able to just give you that. So I admire him so much and I loved him so much. And when they told me I had to fight him, imagine the, the thrill and the surprise. And yes, of course, they handpicked me because it's business. They see me as the least threat, mm -hmm. which believe it or not, I'm seeing you seeing the resume. I beat all, I fought all those champions because they always saw me as the, as the, as the weaker yeah. uh, threat of all the ones around. And most of them, they failed, right? So, yeah. like Gotti, for example, because there's some messy weakling. Anyway, so fighting him in the ring was awesome because my dream was always me to have fight of the year. So I thought I was gonna, finally gonna get it yeah. right there. And I promise you, there were instances when we were like exchanged, and in yeah. my mind, I swear to you, it was like, oh my God, it's gonna happen. It's gonna <laughs> happen. You know, that whole yeah. people screaming, screaming and cuts through, everywhere, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. But he decided to box that fight. Yeah. He decided yeah. to box me, he's move around, maybe because yeah. oh, he's a bigger fighter, you know? Yeah. You know how the game goes. Yeah. Yeah. And it never really happened. But overall, it was a great night, a great it experience. It, uh, I wouldn't say I was the best shape of my life, but I was just in the yeah. highlight of my, of my life, you know? I saw him after the fight with his lip yeah. stitched up. Yeah. We spoke, we traded words. He says he liked me in the contender. <laughs> and I wow. said, I liked him in your yeah, fights, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, oh yeah. my God, you're my idol. No, you're right. my idol. Well, <laughs> picture, picture. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it was really That was, cool. that that was definitely work, an impressive yeah. fight, man. You fought beautifully. The, I actually watched it recently, man, because I wanted to look back at some of your fights. Uh, that was definitely one that I saw, and I was impressed, man. Your counter-punching ability, uh, slipping that jab, coming with the 45. You like to throw that? <laughs> I love it, man. Coming, coming right under. I mean, it was a... Definitely an impressive fight, man. I yeah. mean, we love, I mean, you always produce good fights, bro, straight up. I mean, every well, fight you've been in, Gotti, definitely. whoever it's been with, I mean, it's exciting. Yeah, thank you, yeah. It, it is very exciting uh, to be in those fights. I think, the, I think that the fights that I feel are my best fights yeah. are the ones where I was able, actually able to develop mm -hmm. something, right? In the previous fights before uh, that, my last two fights, which is Kama guy, you mentioned him. Yeah. And Paredes, you know, before that it was more about training, whatever the trainer tells you. Okay. But suddenly something sparks in your brain and says, wait, I feel like I know something that you don't. You know? yeah. Are we allowed as boxers to say that to trainers? Because right. obviously you're in the ring, right? And obviously you and feel this the is punches. A part of, <laughs> this is part of the awakening, all right, guys? Yeah. Are we allowed to tell trainers, no, you're wrong? Yeah. Ooh, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Trust me. They're wrong, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, after retiring, I did my training real quick, you know, I'm gonna switch it up. Yeah, yeah, I did training, I started training people. Yeah. In order to tell people that don't know anything about boxing, how to box, I had yeah. to break it down. And here I find myself breaking boxing down to the math, I swear, you know, the real science. To the simplest form, yeah. Like you have to explain it to a kid. Yeah. And come to realize, like, wait a second, nobody taught me this. Yeah. You know, nobody taught me these things that I'm teaching these people how to box and I'd be become better fighters, how to block better, how to move. And all these things I had to learn, obviously, in the elite level. Fighting the elite fighters that I did, the 17 champions that I did, some help, some kind of knowledge stuck there mm -hmm. that I'm able to say that a lot of trainers out there don't know much, you know? Yeah. So are we allowed as fighters to tell trainers, you know, can we do this, right? So that's one of the things that maybe it'll start waking uh, some boxers and maybe creating some controversy, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, that's not <laughs> sorry, as we should push I like, no, I like no, that side, you know, that, that, that boxer's perspective. It's good yeah. to get that boxer's, that that's fighter's stuff. perspective. Oh, yeah. And the whole training camp, man. David I mean, was training. Yeah. Yeah. David yeah. was training. I mean, I used, to, I used to go to the same thing. I had a father and son. My father was my coach, too. There you go. So I totally understand you, man. So, I mean, it's so, definitely yeah, we good. We can definitely relate in terms yeah. of the father-child yeah. relationship. Exactly. Now, as long as that communication is there, I mean, for real. it should be good, right? Yeah. Alfonso, you know, we as fans of yours, we see the Gotti fight as your signature fight, yeah. right? Do you feel the same way, or do you feel that there's like another fight that lives right up there for the Gotti, like that's personal to you? That... No, actually, I see them all as, you know, special somehow, dude. Imagine. I did fight Gotti and beat him, but, yeah. you know, he also, for example, I beat and retired. Uh, uh, with Castillo. 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 Yeah, and not only that, it was the Pacquiao undercard. 
Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, yeah. it was at the Texas. grand opening in Texas right. to yeah. the whole brand new stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who gets that for God's sake, you know? Yeah. And I knocked him out. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. 50, 60,000 yeah. people there. Hell yeah. So that was... Wow, you know, <laughs> Canelo, the whole tour we did, yeah. the rap I did to him. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. remember that rap, bro. The rap, that was an amazing experience. Yeah. Who else? Uh, Koto, you know, what? Yeah. everybody booing me and calling yeah, me yeah, names. Yeah, yeah. And, dude, every experience, it, every fighter that I fought is an amazing experience, well, you well, know? Speaking of the Koto fight, um, you faced Koto the Machine, the absolute best version in his prime of Miguel Cotto when he was trained by Evangelista. He knows. Exactly. <laughs> He's, he knows his box. I've been talking to him, you know? Yeah. And the way he views boxing is not like regular people. I like him. Very good. You have a... Yeah, good. Thanks for saying that, brother. Yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> uh, now, the, the Cotto experience, uh, talk about what it was like being in the ring with that version of him because people don't understand how big of a monster this dude was when he was with that Evangelista. Before... Well, all I can tell you is like, I've never faced... A tougher fighter in my life, mm -hmm. you know. People ask me who hits harder, who like <laughs> Canelo, Colts is like I really don't know. Can not really say they both yeah, hit pretty yeah, hard? Yeah. But Colto was precise, mm -hmm. dude. This guy didn't throw as many punches, right? Because Co yeah. Canelo, Colt, all the fighters hit me here, here, he, you know, everywhere. It, it's the whole body to be hit. Yeah. But Colto. Koto, <laughs> that guy, when he hit, he was like in the spot, right? Like wherever, like, oh shit, right? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> very precise fighter, very accurate. Plus, I'm sure his power was, you know, yeah. very good. So for me, Koto fighting in his prime and his best moments, definitely the best fighter I've ever fought, the yeah. toughest one. Was he, was he hard to hit? Because, I mean, dude, I mean, he has that, that high guard where he's right. nice and tight. He's slipping punches. How yeah. was it trying to get him, man? I, I know, don't know. I, I can't remember. Tough, I, was in cloud, I was in cloud <laughs> time, bro. <laughs> right. Shit. Right. I was in his home. I was in cloud. What was it, Vegas? Where did I fight him? I can't remember. But, um... Yeah, it was uh, it was an amazing experience fighting him. Very precise fighter, like yeah. great athlete, very quiet. I mean, he's a legend in Puerto Rico. Exactly. Like, kudos to him. And whoo, here is a here's a, a trivia. Wow. You know, we were born the same day. Oh, Actually, that yeah, on the 28th, he's the 29th of October, 1980. So kudos to Mike Scorpio, buddy. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Scorpio magic, definitely, brother. Um, you know, the thing I, I've admired about Cotto uh, was his jab and his left hook, of course. Did Miguel Cotto have the best jab of any fighter you ever faced, would you say? Uh, he had a good jab, you know, but um, I don't know. I mean, I'm being honest. I would say, yeah, it's a best jab, but yeah. I'm just trying to picture fighters and moments of what I felt incredibly well. Who had a good jab? Soto Caraz had a pretty good jab, I have to admit. That's another word. I, wasn't, I was very surprised by his power because he had a pretty good jab, yeah. yeah. So if you ask me, I think Soto Caraz had a better jab than, than, okay. than what's his name, Koto. Mm. Wow. But I guess as an overall fighter, you know who Koto yeah. is, you know who Caraz is. But definitely in terms of that single aspect in my career as my person, yeah, Caraz had an amazing jab. Like, not amazing, but surprisingly good. I want to say it like that. <laughs> Alfonso, if there's one thing that we love to do here on HOB TV, celebrate anniversaries. This week marked the 17th anniversary of Mayweather versus Castillo, and I think we all agree here that Castillo earned that victory, right? Oh, now, yeah. Alfonso, you, you go on to face him and subsequently retire Jose Luis Castillo in your March 2010 fight. Um, he was one of your boxing heroes. How was it like for you to, to retire one of your idols? Was it tough? Uh, how, how were your feelings? Uh, I, I know you were ecstatic because of the win, but that was your hero right there. So, Yeah, definitely. Um, it was amazing, you know, um, to beat him, to fight him. And a lot of people say, you beat the man who beat the man, right, you know, like, like what? It's the 17th anniversary <laughs> of that fight. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing uh, to fight him and to fight him in the honor card of Manny Pacquiao. Yeah at the Texas Stadium, you know. In that time, I had my hair like Justin Bieber. <laughs> I dyed it black. What the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> you were a rock star back then. Yeah, dude, not only hey, that. You're, that at was Texas, you're at the Texas Stadium. Not only that, you, you know gotta, what you happened? Right. You know what happened? No, I'll yeah. tell you what happened, guys, everybody. This is gonna be, this is trivia too. Yeah. Nobody knows this. I was training in Oxnard 
with uh, with Sergio Martinez. Mm, maravilla. You know, Maravilla. Yeah. So we did, you know, we did the whole things, and that was one of the fights where I had the best body, I have to admit. <laughs> when I trained with his trainer, um, Cecilio, yeah. over there in uh, Oxnard, the, one of the best bodies I had. I did the tan, everything, <laughs> everything Sergio did, I yeah. did. That's why that, that fight, I was like, my hair like this, you know, but you know, Man, I love that fight, that was tight. Uh, Alfonso, one thing, I always, one thing I always respected about you was your humility, even in defeat. You showed it early in your career in the contender. You gave Peter Manfredo well wishes in the locker room when he beat you. And when you defeated Castillo, you told him just how much he meant to you. Uh, was there one fighter who showed you that same humility after a defeat or after any fight? I like him. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, hey, if I ever start hiring people, <laughs> I know where you are, homeboy, I swear. <laughs> dude, dude, we could have, yeah. Oh, man. Um, no, I don't think so. You know, this is the thing. One of the things coming back to boxing, I'm going to apply it to your question, sure. is that um, I want to change the mentality in a way. I help change the mentality a bit of boxers so they can find some sort of comfort and happiness somewhere in their brains, right? One of the things is that we tend to be too secluded, too, yeah. no, too mean, too, I'm too prideful, too, you know? One of the instances, I was sparring uh, Brian Cast uh, Castaño. Brian Castaño was sparring yeah. him at Legends Boxing before one of his big fights. Uh, he, had, he had a championship fight. And he said, man, after the sparring, you're slow, right? But you're able to like get me. How do you do it? You're not as fast. Mm -hmm. And I told him, oh, it's about timing. And I started explaining to him the whole scenario of timing, blah, blah, blah. And after that, my trainer said, hey, what do you tell him? Why? You might fight him one day. <laughs> he might get you. Not. So this idea of that, and I told him, why? Because if I tell him an idea that he doesn't know that's gonna make him a better fighter, Oh my God, I am so happy because it's gonna feed his family more. It's like, it's so, it's so thrilling to know that I'm helping him in a way, right? Even yeah. though he's gonna kick my ass, I don't care. It's that aspect of it. So to ask you your question, they don't because people don't have that. And there's nobody telling them they can't do that. So I'm telling you, Boxer, you can. You can go to the other fighter and tell him your secrets. Make him a better fighter, make him a better version. If it's not applied to you because you're not disciplined, because whatever, that's okay. Yeah. Pass it on, he could be the one. Yeah. Don't be the one. Everybody yeah. thinks they're the one, right? Yeah. I'm the one. Yeah. No, somebody else could be the one, but you could be the one that makes him the one. How about that, dude? Yeah, Just be real. Anyway. That's a great story, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alfonso, uh, so we talked about Gotti, Castillo, Cotto, Canelo now. Alfonso, did you ever think at the time you know, when you were facing Canelo that this 21-year-old kid that you were facing would go on to be the $300 million face of boxing. Uh, Did you ever think at that time, no? No, I don't yeah. think anybody knows that. He's, yeah. you know, he's just a good fighter. Yeah. He's very disciplined, you know, I know that about him. He seems very serious, you know, for his age, yeah. you know. Um, there's just different yeah. types of personality. Uh, he's able to, to be, I guess, like a soldier, you know, told what to do, he does it properly. Um, so kudos to him. I don't. I'm not like that. I'm more like a free-minded, open spirit. I question everything, yeah. and you know, which in essence has given me more liberty to to expand other other things. So you, I mean, you definitely had your moments in that fight. Premature stoppage. I, I think we could agree on that. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's the game. That's the business. It was my fault yeah. for not pushing it, understanding the business more. You know, but you know, that's how it goes. It's business. Even though you know, a lot of people say I was winning on this con. Score yeah. cards. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Alfonso, uh, you've, you've had a bit of bad luck in that there were fights, big fights, that you had signed, but that fell through. We talked about Chavez Jr., Jesse Vargas. Is there another fight that fell through? Is there one fight out there that, looking back, you're like, man, I wish it could have happened? One with Victor Ortiz. Jesse Vargas, no, I'm not interested in him. I mean, he's cool. I don't know much about him, but it doesn't seem to be somebody that fits into my plans of expanding my, my presence online because my, my goal is to be maybe one of the first, if not the first, uh, influencer boxer in the game. You know, yeah. um, This is what I said yesterday, and I keep saying it. Um, boxers seem to, I don't know. I just want to be that voice that gives an opportunity, for example, there, if, if me and Caraz were doing this show, I'm sure it would be a lot more ratings for some reason. Yeah. It is yeah. what it is, yeah. but we don't do it. Why? Because we're, we're, sle we're sleeping, you know? They're sleeping. Uh, there's so, so many retired fighters right now that have a podcast. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. and have sponsorships and get associated with Mauricio, uh, with WBC somehow. You know, but I don't know. They're, you know what? They're waiting. You know what they're waiting for? They're waiting for the trainer to tell them what to do. Mm. They're waiting for the manager to get him a fight. They're waiting for the promoter. They're, they're waiting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that, saying. because after 20, 30 years of being waiting, telling what to do, how to train, and everything, we retired or we come to an end and we're still waiting. No, nah, man. Action, baby. Let's do a podcast. Who wants to do a... What other boxer out there that he has, you know, that like big name that is retired mm -hmm. wants to do a podcast with me? There you go. Simple as that. You got to make Simple. it happen. You, you know, make things happen. send them the message and then the email. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. We'll get in contact. Easy, it's easy as that, you know, and then we can make money and be yeah. on and be own yeah. our own our shit, own our stuff, yeah. own boxing. our name. Talk boxing, something you guys know, something yeah. you guys lived, something. I'm just saying, you, you know, the, uh, but they're sleeping. You know? yeah, Let's true. wake them up. Right. Exactly. Wake up, wake up, wake <laughs> up. Well, so, wake something, up. something along those lines, Afonso, your contender castmate, fight mate. Sergio Moore is now a broadcaster. He does blow by blow with his own. Yeah. You know, you're a bright, well spoken, well liked guy. Is that something you'd like to try yourself, broadcasting? Definitely. I mean, I've been asked, Whoo, you should go into broadcasting. Se comentarista, mijo. Se comentarista, mijo. Uh, yeah, I mean, something interesting. I like it. I like getting all that stuff going. Um, yeah. Totally. I like Sergio. Sergio's cool. Yeah. Yeah, cool. kudos to him. This La Latina ser Serpent Latin. Wait. Yeah, the land Snake. The land land snake. snake. There you go. Sorry, Serge. I'm fucking yeah. other name. But yeah, the Land Snake Mora. All right. Exactly. There you go. So we're going to go into Alfonso Gomez. We got some questions. Okay. From members here at the boxing gym, some viewers. The random so, questions. Random questions. We're going to go over these questions and we're going to discuss them real quick. All right. And talk about what these questions are. So the first question that I'm pulling out, okay? First question is, guys, who, in your opinion, wins, will be Triple G's next trainer? Mm. As you heard. Yeah. I think his next trainer should be himself. I'm sure he knows mm. enough, right? He do, if he needs somebody to like guide him through his own process, yeah. through his own training, so if he needs somebody to push him, I mean, he, can, he can get somebody he trusts, you know, yeah. I want to say. But when you ask me, does he need a trainer? I don't think so. He's fucking Triple G. <laughs> His trainer need him. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? So that's there is a question. There <laughs> is. Of course. Uh, who, who do you say, David, real quick? Who, who's going to be Triple G's next I think G's either next Robert Garcia or Freddie Roach. I think those are the two guys that are the big yeah. names there. I mean, in Triple G situation. Oh, yeah. In terms of Triple business, G's, you know, let's, yeah. let's talk in business, business now. Yeah. yeah. In exactly. terms of business now, you do need exactly. some <laughs> name. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think Freddie Roach would be the best best person exactly. for him to Because And at to. that stage, he's he's already an established fighter. He got his style. All you have to do is get him ready. And I, that'll definitely be a smart move for him to yeah. go with either with Freddie, Freddie Roach, Roach yeah. or totally. Robert Garcia. Why not? I, I, think, I, I, would like, I like Robert too. You know, I yeah. trained with Robert for uh, two fights, for the Caraz fight, yeah. for the Castillo fight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Robert too. He's a, he has a great trainer too. Oh, definitely. Um, I personally, I would like to see Triple G link up with Buddy McGirt. He did some great things with Crusher Kovalev. He turned a puncher into a quite a boxer, and the footwork was different. Looking like a gazelle out there, Crusher Kovalev in his last fight. Kovalev and Triple G are homies, or buddies. Okay. So I like to see Triple G link up with Buddy McGirt. Yeah. Okay, so our next question is gonna be, what did you think this past Saturday, Khan suffering that low blow, do you think he was quitting? Um. I don't know, dude. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'll, let's just praise Khan. He goes into the ring, makes this big promotion, get, makes everyone happy. You know, if you think about it, his loss made, made um, um, what's this other fighter's name? Crawford. Yeah, Crawford. Crawford? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Walter. Yeah, Crawford <laughs> made him look like even a bigger superstar, you know? Yeah. So thank you, Amir Khan, for making Crawford look like a superstar. Yeah. Why, why put him down? I mean, to the blow, a low blow, I don't know. He's the one that felt it. Exactly. You know, I, I wish somebody of the people that say that can come here and I can, as a boxer, professional boxer, we know how to hit, homie. Yeah. I'm going to graze your balls, dog. <laughs> and yeah. just tell me how you feel. Exactly. I'm going to graze. I'm not really going to hit him. I'm just going to graze him. You know, that's it. And yeah. you tell me how you feel. Man, I, I agree with you 100%, man. I mean, as a fighter, only he knows what he felt, right? Uh, being hit down there is definitely something mm -hmm. different. And 
the way the fight was going, he was gonna need those legs, right? <laughs> to keep moving. So I mean, in order for him but, to understand the business side and earn himself another payday, I think it was a smart move on on the behalf of his coach. No, like, did and he quit? Him, uh, okay, answering directly that question, you know, because yeah. people still focus on the quitting aspect of it. Yeah. Now, if you, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll flip the question. Yeah. Was he a smart person to realize that he has a family waiting for him? Exactly. You know, that he has a yeah. business to run? Of course. People that depend on this multi... Because he doesn't, have, he he doesn't have a mom and pop shop. Yeah. He has a multi-million dollar business, and they depend on the mere con name, of right? And was he, he a smart person to decide to not continue? Yeah. Was he smart about maybe you know, creating controversy, making his name bigger? Yeah. Nor people are talking about con than Walter, trust me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean, I agree, good man. Job, it was huh? a, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a good move, man. And he's shown in his past fights, he'll go out. I mean, look at Canelo yeah. fight. Danny, he's, he, he's shown in yeah. his past fights. Okay. That, I mean, let him be a I mean, business, smart, exactly. smart businessman. What's I the agree. problem with that? I don't I hate agree. him on that. I Nobody said either. that you have to die in the ring. No. Nobody said that you have to be stupid. You know, and this is part of the awakening to the boxers. Don't yeah. be stupid. Nobody says that you have to be there and, you know, suffer, you know? Yeah. If you don't see, so if you don't see that's part of your business plan, like, dude, all right, just, just fine. Get paid. We'll see you another day. Yeah. We'll figure another fight, right? What's the problem with that, for God's yeah. sakes? I like, I like that answer, man. I agree with you. I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, bro. Okay. All right. So look, we're gonna go into our last question. Final question, okay. 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 Alfonso. All right. Our last question, Alfonso. What's your prediction for Canelo versus Jacobs next week's big pay per view fight? Well, actually, it's not. It's the zone, right? So, I mean, if you have the zone app, you're able to watch that fight. Canelo Jacobs, your prediction? Um, I don't know. Canelo. Canelo? Yeah. How? What do you think? Is it going decision? Is, 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 you think, you think Honestly, Jacobs dude, has the boxing mean, skill to... I say Canelo, but, or Jacobs. It's that kind of fight. I mean... Yeah, I don't care. It doesn't matter, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Uh, I think that, I mean, if you think about it, uh, didn't Jacobs fought Sergio Mora? Yes. And he got dropped yeah. by Sergio Mora? Yes. So he Sergio does, Mora does not have, you know, too yeah, much power. He does have a questionable chin. Jacobs does have a questionable chin. And you chin. put him against Canelo. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to go by math. I'm going to go say that Canelo wins. By knockout? Uh, yeah, by knockout. By knockout. Later rounds, early rounds, and early stoppage. Uh, later, later. Later rounds? Yeah, because okay. the other guy's going to move. He has to move. Yeah, he, exactly. he knows he has a weaker chin. Yeah. You know? I'm gonna go into the into the into the matrix. So he has a weaker chin, so yeah. he probably figures out that he's gonna be boxing him. Yeah. And then you know Canelo eventually has to cut the ring, mm -hmm. get those big blows, and guess what? He usually lands yeah. them. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think I agree, man. I agree. It's gonna be a great fight. Uh, like you said, Jacob's gonna have to box, uh, but he tends to want to stay there at times, and his pride gets a hold of him, and he wants to try to bang like he did with Triple G at times, which. Uh, I Triple think G will cost him. him. Triple yeah. G top dropped him, and I think that'll be his downfall in this fight. Him trying to stay there, uh, getting tired because he tends to get tired at the end of the fight. I think Canelo will end up catching him, man. He's gonna Canelo's gonna go to the body early, slow him down, and catch him over top. Some of those hooks, those overhand, overhand rights he throws. I mean, it'll be a great fight. That's it. Well, Alfonso, thanks again for joining us tonight. Uh, very inspiring words, man. Great stories, exactly. great stuff. No problem. Thank um, you. You're you're amazing. Let me tell you. You know, I tend to like usually talk, 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 and people just stay listen. But you know how to guide the the, the show very well. So you're gonna see him bigger. You know him too. Oh, yeah. He's part oh, of yeah. this whole project. You know, he's when when you when you think of House of Boxing, yeah, remember his right. face. Hey, all right, on. that's Let's it. Go. You know, Let's you just brand your face like this. Let's go. You know Thank you saying? for joining us. No problem. Uh, Thanks for your, your inspiration. And also, where can where can people follow you so oh, they yeah. can stay connected oh, with you? Dude, and hopefully follow stay me. tuned for that follow future me. podcast. Follow me on, yeah, my future podcast. Hey, yeah. come on. Let's, let's, At El Gomez Boxing. Okay. Uh, and on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, El Gomez. Um, yeah, you know, basically, you know, just follow me. We want to grow this. We want to grow this knowledge that I'm trying to spread. Yeah, I like it. You know, you could be part of the roots that start spreading it. You know, why not? Yeah. You know, that doesn't hurt. So, again, hey, thank you again, Alfonso, man. No problem. Thank appreciate you. It, appreciate it, man. Awesome. If you guys awesome are watching you. for the first time or if you guys are uh, our continued viewers here, go ahead and leave a comment. If you guys want to see uh, who Alfonso Gomez fights next, you guys want to throw out some names, throw out some names, leave some comments. Make sure to follow our boy, Alfonso Gomez. Stay tuned next time for next week's episode. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, guys.